All right, so time for another demonstration. Ignore the nice Sriracha uh, pants there. Got a Makina M2 hooked up there. You can see it's flashing away. Nice red USB cord. Uh, back over here, it's a Bu 2008 Buick uh, Enclave that I'm in right now. I'm going to start up brand new version of Savvy Can that nobody has yet. UDS scanner. I'm going to try tester present and session control just to kind of show how this works. Start the scan. You can see it uh, up to 100% there. We've got all of these uh, ECUs. See here, 7E0 responded to tester present and diag control. The two things that I selected down there. Uh, but tester present, you might be able to see that OO is red. So it responded negatively. It says that that subfunction is not supported. Uh, basically, it means that it doesn't really want to give me replies to test or present. But at least it responded to tell me that it didn't want to give me replies. Uh, for diag control mode 1, subfunction is not supported because it's already in session mode 1 at the moment. So there's no reason to try to do it again. For session mode 2, it told me it could. And 3 says conditions are not correct, probably because uh, session mode 3 would be secured access, and I haven't attempted to do that. So that ECU obviously is there and responding. Uh, try this one, 7E1. You can see these are grayed out. That means no reply. So apparently 7E1 nobody responds to. 7E2, people, uh, an ECU will respond. So if I go over here and unclick show tests with no replies, then I can start a scan, and now you see there are only two ECUs in this car that reply. Uh, one replies to 7E0 and one replies to 7E2. At the moment, you don't get to see uh, what the reply address was, but this car is compliant where replies are 8 above the address that you sent on. So. The replies are 7E8 and 7EA, but I have down there clicked allow adaptive offset, which would have picked them up even if they weren't uh, an offset of 8. On this Buick, they always are an offset of 8, but I've tried doing UDS on a Leaf. And on the Leaf, I think most of the offsets are either 16 or 32. So if you don't cl uh, click adaptive offset, or if you at least don't, then uh, change your reply offset to something other than 8. It won't think that you've got any replies. So, something a little more exciting, perhaps. Let's turn off the session control and test your present UDS scans. I'll just, just take my word for it, the ECU reset. It won't do. But we'll try uh, getting security keys. So I click on here, the first ECU does respond to security access. So I've got my key here. Try this one. Once again, uh, this is a leftover. So really my key for this one was 19 BC. My key for here is 60 BA. I don't know how to generate the replies, but you can see that they did respond to security access. So obviously it could work if I knew how to generate those codes. Uh, more interesting things down here, read by ID, read by address. You can actually pull through the... I'll kind of show you how that works. Go in here. Say I want to try to read all 65,536 different types of ID here. So I put in that I need two bytes for my addresses. They're from 0 to FFF. And... I'm using the read by ID service, so I'll start that up. Clicking here, read by ID. You can see it's starting at 00. zero. It, it did respond positively to many different IDs there. It did not respond positively to 16 or 17 or 1A, 1B, 1D, but quite a few addresses in there are showing up 
if I look at these, say 2C, I can see that it responded with data 2C00. Uh, on all these, the first byte is potentially the, or the first two bytes on this, because I have two bytes for the sub function, are actually the address. So really, this responded with zero, this responded with 3644. Uh, I'll go through here. See that it looks like it quit letting me uh, specify IDs anymore. All these IDs, it's just saying, no, nope, you can't do that. So I could abort here because I'm pretty sure it, it looks like it's never going to allow me to have any of the rest of these. It responds with the request was out of range. So it looks like all my addresses are probably way up here. On a curious note, if you don't give it uh, two byte addresses, it will reject all of these. So you wouldn't have seen these come up with data uh, if, if I had not set the address to two. But there's that. And one of the more interesting but long-winded approaches, I could set that I only want to run on the one ECU. I'm going to go into wildcard mode with only one byte as the sub-function, go from service 0 to FF, and we're just going to basically spam this bus with every form of service. You can The service is the first byte, so there's in one byte you can have a, a value from 0 to 255. So we're going to try every service byte possible and one sub-function by each and just see what it replies with. So on zero, it didn't do anything. On bytes that have a known function, like service number one is obd2 show current parameters. So it automatically shows up as the service if that's a known service instead of showing it up numerically. So on the known service, this is normally how you would pull OBD2 data on the OBD2 port. So quite a few of these do respond because it is a car. It does support OBD2. So you can see it responded to 33 with 64. So I don't know what OBD2 PID 33 is, but the response was 64. The response here is 00. The response here is 55. So it's responding properly to OBD2 messages. At the moment, it, it's probably going to not look like much. If I didn't have show tests with no results or no replies unclicked, you'd see an awful lot of grayed out stuff. But just to make it a lot less busy, I've taken that off. So it only shows me things that the car does respond to and not things that got no response. See down here, we're currently at 1%. This is quite a long test to try to pull every service with a one byte sub function. Uh, if I had gone to two byte sub functions, this would take an absolute eternity to run. Uh, so, so far we've got these tests here. Quite a bit of things are just denying me. If I look in the OBD2 test O2 sensors, tells me that this service is not supported. So of course, every sub function then is gonna show service wasn't supported. Uh, oddly enough on OBD2 clear DTC or clear the fault codes, it tells me that the sub function's not supported for pretty much all of them. So I don't know if I just, I don't know how if this card just plain doesn't support clearing the fault codes through the if, OBD2 clear DTC service or what, but they pretty much all tell me to get lost. Uh, let's see here. Vehicle info actually responds with a couple of messages. It responds here with 55000. Respond here. I don't know what all these are. We have another DTC code. 
you can see once again anything uh, that I can zoom in here a little more. Anything that doesn't have a known code but gets a response will show up numerically. So B would have been 11. So service 11 responds for some reason, but it responds with the service not supported. So I don't know what B is, but pretty much responds that no, that's not a service we support. I don't know why it bothers to do that quite a few other services that it doesn't bother to respond to at all, but those it responds to and says, nope, can't do it. So here we see that GMLAN actually does have some codes that are uh, not very standard. Uh, apparently I should learn to not tip the camera up. Uh, but it does respond to some codes that are GMLAN. I don't have the schematics for uh, GMLAN codes or the the specifications, so I don't really know what what to do to interpret data there. But for the most part, this is kind of a boring process here. While you uh, let this run, you probably just go get a drink or something while this is running. It can run all by itself. When you're done, you come up with a list of every uh, service that your car supports along with its reply to a, a wide variety of sub functions this way and you can use this to drill down and find out what kinds of things your car will respond to what it's uh, allowed what it will allow you to do without being in secured mode what it won't allow you to do uh, probably eventually add a, a capacity where if you could come up with the algorithm to generate a security key, probably add it to the program where it'll allow you to unlock the security mode and then try this uh, wildcard scan again on a on the on the car without or with security mode enabled. And there's the security access again. Some of these you could have gotten more easily through the uh, scan type types down there, but the wildcard scan is good to find things that the that I didn't put a checkbox for, or things that uh, are non-standard. Because car makers could pretty much put anything they want on UDS and come up with non-standard things. Uh, they just there's only a couple of standards they have to follow the OBD2 standards up here for emissions compliance if it's an internal combustion engine vehicle like this is on an electric car all bets are out for what they're actually going to support but quite a few electric cars do use uds for firmware upgrades so uh, this still isn't a complete lost cause on electric vehicles you can still use the wild card to try to find out what services the electric car supports uh, what kind of address offsets it has when it replies to messages like I said on the leaf there instead of 8 that'll use 16 or 32 as the offset that kind of messes up a standard UDS scanner but if you've got a specialized one like this you can still read the messages so while I've been gabbing away we're up to about 22 percent on this scan you can see quite a few different things that the car responds to uh, it's probably going to slap my hands here for request download and say, no, you're not in security mode. So let's see what, what it says here. Sub functions not supported. Or it might just say a lot of these sub functions aren't supported. I don't remember off the top of my head which sub functions uh, request download is supposed to be using. Not everything uses them right at the bottom, 0, 1, or 2. That's why I'm scanning all 256 of them. So, can be a little boring, but this kind of shows you uh, the maximum amount of data on the car. And then once you're done, since this isn't a real exciting process, you'll probably want to save the results when you're done. And then you can always look at it later and you don't have to go through the very long process again. But figured I'd just show this. A uh, UDS scanner could be useful for a lot of different cars to figure out what you're working with, uh, where you might 
uh, attack is an ugly word, but uh, where you might focus your efforts when you're trying to figure out how to uh, play with your car and figure out what other neat stuff you can get it to do, uh, you probably the first thing you want to do potentially is run a, a UDS scan like this that runs through a wild card and looks at, looks at all of the different options. Uh, a scan like this, you can see what it responds to and then perhaps uh, set your lower and upper service to a, a single service and then your sub function bytes you could run, say, to two bytes and run all 65,536 different sub-functions on a two-byte range and see if anything responds better that way. As I had said, on this car, uh, read by ID does not like to work single-byte, but it will work double-byte for a two-byte reply. So uh, that was what was required on this car. I'll try and go up here and show that. Uh, read by ID... You can see before that a lot of those IDs were green, but this time they're all red because I'm doing single. So that kind of shows you that the car can be pretty picky uh, at what you do. So if I go up in here, it says the sub function's not supported. So sometimes even a sub function that technically is supported, like I think three really did respond positively before, if you don't have the right length, it still might. Uh, not work. There is an error to say that the length is wrong, but this car apparently doesn't do that and just uh, tells me that the sub function is not supported. So some of these other things that I can't figure out why they wouldn't be supported, like say clear OBD2 or clear DTC, probably the, the problem here is that I needed uh, two bytes or three bytes or four bytes or something like that instead of one. But once again, with this wildcard scan, you could do that. So more later, but that's the UDS mode and shows how you can use the uh, Makina M2 uh, to easily do that. It hooks right up to the OBD2 port and makes that pretty simple.